today, if you are a traveling salesman, chances are you are driving something along the lines of a Skoda Octavia Estate or maybe a grey Volkswagen Passat. Those are, by any metric, excellent cars. They are spacious, reliable, economical and safe. But also, let's be honest, incredibly mundane. If you were a traveling salesman in the US in the late 1930s, however, you would probably have been driving across the country in something that looked a little bit like this. This is a 1938 Chevrolet Master Deluxe Business Coupe. It is a bit of a mouthful to say, but Look at this thing. It's worth every goddamn syllable. You see, cars really haven't changed that much in 80 or so years. You still have a wheel at each corner, an engine, generally in the front to give some room, a cabin with some seats and a steering wheel so you don't end up in a ditch too often. What seems to have happened, if you give even a cursory glance at automotive history, is that cars seem to have become progressively more and more boring. Granted, a lot of that has to do with safety reasons, with the additions of crumple zones and airbags and whatnot. And it is true that some car manufacturers still do make an effort to make interesting looking cars today, but this is largely reserved for the super and hypercar market segments. Oh, and a Fiat Multipla, of course. The everyday man used to be able to drive to work in a badass business coupe like this one. Nowadays, it's all Fiestas and Priuses. Of course, one cannot talk about this particular car without looking at the context in which it was made. The 1930s were a difficult time in the USA and the car industry was hit particularly hard by the October 1929 Wall Street crash and the Great Depression that ensued. But the 30s were also a time of innovation, maybe because only the wealthiest Americans could afford to buy a car during that decade. Manufacturers started offering more and more features as standard, like heaters, radios, automatic chokes, synchromesh transmissions and hydraulic brakes. The engine offering also started to look familiar with more and more V8s, V12s and even V16s. And of course the design language evolved quite a bit as well, moving away from the very square lines of the Ford Model T into the beautiful teardrop design that this Chevy Master is sporting. Not everybody agrees on when the golden age of car design was, but uh, I think that a strong case could be made for the 1930s. This thing is an absolute beauty. Now, this car might be about twice as old as I am, ish, but unlike me, it still goes like stink. Now, to be fair, some of you might have noticed that not everything on this car is original. Actually, very little on this car is original. Well, most of the body is original, but you can already see that the interior has been significantly updated with this beautiful and very comfortable bucket seat and brand new trimmings. The body has also received some amount of plastic surgery, but that's mostly to accommodate the brand new 17-inch alloy wheels. The silhouette of the car, however, is still very true to its original, younger self. It is when you peel off the skin that you realize the extent of the work that has been done. This puppy hasn't received so much a facelift as a full-on bionic upgrade. To begin with, the engine has been replaced with a 5.7-liter Chevrolet 350 V8 that has been supercharged to produce 400 brake horsepower. And that means that when you put your foot down, a lot of speed happens, along with a lot of noise. Of 
course, to help the car handle all this power, the front and rear suspensions have been replaced with a set lifted from a Jaguar XJR. The drivetrain has been replaced and the gearbox and the exhaust system. In truth, this is way more than a simple nose job. And just like Jamie Summers, this old lady is a real bionic woman. This Master Deluxe then might be a true sleeper, but I don't think this really is what this type of car is for. Actually, I think that this is less a vehicle than it is a piece of art. It feels like the engineers prioritized beauty over functionality. And that really speaks volumes about the difference of mindsets between then and now. Over the last century, but over the past 20 years or so especially, car manufacturers have been obsessed with making cars more and more like computers, efficient, cold and slick. And that makes a lot of sense. We are running out of resources and protecting the environment is a very clear and present concern. And I doubt that anybody would argue that modern cars aren't vastly superior to old timers like this one, but still, I can shake the feeling that in our quest to make cars really, really good, somewhere along the way, we've lost track of what used to make them great. Now I only have a few hours left with this old gal, so if you don't mind, I'll just keep driving, business as usual. Ich lasse den Transition und kurz war ganz cool. Los geht's wie Connaissance. Die Jimmy Cast und Jen. Quel big satisfaction. Fasson, grosse pierre qui roule. Los Galvin en silence. Près de ma carcasse. Alors, elle me demande à oui, Fakul. Speak English. Ses yeux riaient si fort qu'aussitôt je suis tombé. Yes, mon petit Jean, je suis down. Disant, allez, chicha, 